So these are the elements that is a predefined element from the Salesforce. So the second element in the pricing procedure is the list price. So now what we are doing, we are now creating a pricing procedure. Time for the pricing procedure. So a pricing procedure is a customizable and you know ordered sequence of pricing elements used to calculate the final price of a product. So if you can see here that it is showing a pricing procedure. So these are the elements that is a predefined element from the Salesforce. So we have the pricing settings, we have the price book entries, then we have some discounts, you know, based on the volume based on the attribute and also some manual discount so these are the elements that is present in the pricing salesforce pricing and in the pricing procedure so we'll go through one by one first one is the pricing setting so what is the pricing setting so every pricing procedure starts with the pricing setting element these elements maps the common pricing variables to the context tags that we have already seen in the context definition so the second element in the pricing procedure is the list price you can see here uh, this is the list price element so this element is used to calculate the base price of product based on its product selling model price book and currency it's usually the second element when building the pricing procedure okay then we have another component there is the volume discount entries you can see here so it's you know the calculate the product price using the volume discount element which applies the discount based on the quantities purchased okay so if we have a a condition where suppose someone purchased in a laptop for their company more than 100 pieces then give a extra discount on that product to that particular customer so this we can do it with the volume discount entries okay then we have the attribute based price so use the attribute based price elements is to calculate the price of a product based on the discount set for certain price impacting attributes for example a laptop might cost more with the larger hard drive or with the more memory okay so this is something we will discuss in the attribute based price then we have you know the manual discount so we have the manual discount you can see here this manual discount element is to calculate the final price of a product after you manually enter the discount externally okay whenever you are creating the code you are editing the code in the code line then you can put those discounts if suppose adjustment type such as the amounts as is the percentage and also the currency as well also there are bundle based price calculate the bundle pricing using the bundle page price element which applies discount to product sets for instance you know someone offers a laptop deal and there we have the laptop we have the mouse we have a warranty all together in a discounted price so that thing is calculated in the bundle page price so now what we are doing Doing, we are now creating a pricing procedure so in the pricing procedure we are clicking the new button and in name you know let's provide any name so for example we are writing a pricing procedure so the api name is automatically populated now the usage type we are using these for pricing purpose here you can see there are lots of other things we can do it we can for the rating discovery we can for you know pricing discovery that we are going to talk about or we can do it for the financial side is cloud or product qualification we have some product qualification disqualification rules that is turned on the business rule engine so we have already seen that in our product catalog management lecture okay so these are some of the usage type or you know the price procedure whenever we're creating the pricing procedure next we have to choose the context definition so this is the main point here so the context definition is something where we are getting the data so in salesforce pricing we have a lots of you know data sources okay but to make it more easier what salesforce provide they provide a context service okay there we have you know some input we have created some node and we created a context mapping where we what do we define we map those inputs from the various you know source of data and we map those inputs to the variable and those variables are used in you know different pricing elements 
means those variables are used in for different pricing calculations to make it more easy as for the user who is setting up the pricing. So here in this case, what we are doing, we are selecting the revenue sales transaction text. So for your knowledge in revenue cloud, we have the sales transaction content where we have, you know, uh, the data where we are getting the data from the codes, from the orders, from from the places used in the revenue cloud. So in these, you know, demo or purpose, whenever we are creating any demo, or there we have the context definition name as the red hyphen sales transaction context. So this is the extended version of the context definition that is present actually in the sales transaction context in your actual production or or in your developer or for the project. Okay, so these are pretty much for the pricing procedure. Now we are clicking on the save button. So here you can see these are the details that we have already filled up. Now we have the pricing procedure version. So in the pricing procedure version for the by default one, whenever we are creating a new pricing procedure, the default version is named as the pricing procedure V1. We can create the several versions like as the flow. In the flow, we have created several flows and there are several versions of that flow. Same for this, we can create several versions of the pricing procedure and those are listed one by one inside these pricing procedure versions. So now if we are open the pricing procedure V1, then you can see this is the you know, clean pricing procedure builder. Here we can add the elements that we have seen at the beginning and you know then we'll work through each and every element and we'll, let's see how, how it will work. Okay. So if we click on the plus, then you can see there are several elements provided by the pricing. Okay. So this is mentioned as the pricing element. So first, what we have seen in, you know, sometimes before whenever we are going to the pricing procedure example. So the first element always should be the pricing settings. So if you click on the pricing settings, this is the first element. So here you can see you have these and you have output variables as these. Okay. So these input variables if you can remember the input and output fields we have gone through in the lookup tables or in the decision tables there we have some fields for the input where we have the input criteria based on that we are picking the records from the lookup tables and which fields we are going to consider as the output variable that is also mentioned here so for here we are using the line item okay for the input variables this is the must tab okay so for the line item we are using the line item so the line item context this is you can see this is the context from the sales transaction and inside the sales transaction we have the sales transaction item and inside that we have the line item so these are the node basically from the context definition part okay so for the line item we are using the line item for the currency we we are not doing any derive on the contract that we are using the single currency are okay fine so we can leave it as it is for the line item we are using the line item so what is the line item basically means this is the quote line item so we will see whenever inside the quote whenever we will add any product then each product we have the quote line item okay so from that line item this record id will be passed to the pricing settings element so that is how it is working now now, if we talk about the output variables, then we have the price waterfall. For that, I am using the price waterfall, price waterfall. Okay. For the net unit price, I am using the net unit price on steps. And for the subtotal, I am using item net total price. Okay. Fine. So now we are okay with the pricing setting elements. Okay. Now moving to, you know, the list price elements. First, we are going to set this work now it